hour deciding O.J. Simpson's fate. Four Nevada parole board commissioners set to hear arguments this afternoon about whether to release the former football star who's approaching the nine-year minimum on a 33-year sentence for armed robbery, kidnapping, and an assault with a deadly weapon. Fox News correspondent Dan Springer is outside Lovelock Correctional Center in Nevada right now with the very latest. Dan, good morning to you. Yeah, hi, Maria. We're at uh, the latest Camp OJ, 240 credentialed media covering this event today. And as you mentioned, OJ Simpson has already served a minimum nine years of a nine to 13 year sentence for armed robbery and a host of other charges. And just about everyone who knows Nevada law and knows the process expects him to win his freedom. Now, OJ was before this very same parole board in 2013. And at that time, he was granted parole on five of the 12 charges he was convicted of. The lawyer who represented Simpson in this case says that's the clearest indication OJ will get parole today. At that hearing, Simpson showed remorse for his crimes and said he has been a model prisoner. Now, if he is released, Yale Galanter has some advice for the 70 year old OJ. If he goes back into the public eye and he starts doing the nightclub scene and the book signings and uh, all the other things that, that he's been photographed and reported on and doing, trouble will follow him and he will get in trouble again. Now, if Simpson wins today, he will not be sprung. That would happen at the earliest October 1st. There are several factors that this parole board must consider. Uh, they look at a, the severity of the crime, and in this case, it was an armed robbery, uh, a botched armed robbery at that, and a brief kidnapping of two sports memorabilia dealers in a Las Vegas hotel. They will consider his age and how he has acted in prison these past nine years. Simpson has kept his nose clean behind bars, no discipline handed out, but the the board also must decide how likely O.J. is to reoffend, and here they can factor in the murder charges that he beat. Remember, two years later, he lost a wrongful death suit. That was 1997. Simpson was ordered at that case to pay Ron Goldman's family $33.5 million. The Goldman family hasn't collected any of that because O.J. has been able to keep his $25,000 a month pension, NFL pension, away from the Goldman family. Maria? All right, Dan, we'll be watching. Big, big uh, hearing today. Thank you, Dan Springer. Joining us, let's uh, talk right now with former O.J. Simpson defense attorney, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus, Alan Dershowitz. Alan, it's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining <laughs> us. What are the chances that Simpson actually walks free today? If his name wasn't O.J. Simpson, it would be 100 percent. But really? uh, the 900-pound gorilla in the room is the fact that probably the members of the parole board believe, as many Americans do, that he got away with murder as a result of what our legal team did and how badly the prosecution botched the case. And if that's taken into account, it really would constitute a violation of the spirit of double jeopardy. He's been acquitted. It shouldn't uh, count. The fact that uh, he was found civilly liable only shows the complexity of our uh, legal system. Right, because he, he's, in, he's in jail for what we said, armed robbery. And, um, and, you know, when he went in, he took his stuff back. He said it was his stuff. He usually get a three-year sentence. Or something he's been like in there that. nine years. Yeah. But, the, but what's in the background? is he got away with a double murder. That's right. And, and that shouldn't be taken into account. <clears throat> Even um, Officer Furman, who I was on with yesterday, said if you consider the case in a legal vacuum, which means if you apply the rule of law, he should be paroled. He's 70 years old. That counts in his favor. He's been a model prisoner. That counts in his favor. And he got an excessive sentence. That counts in his favor. There are really no lawful considerations which militate in favor of him staying in jail. So I'm not making any predictions because his name is O.J. Simpson. Bye. And everything about him and about his case is unpredictable. By the way, I completely agree with his previous lawyer's statement. When uh, Klaus von Bülow was acquitted, I was his lawyer in that case, I said to him, Klaus, the public doesn't want to see your face. Get out of the public view. Wow. He has done that. He's 90-something years old. He's lived a great life away from the public light with his grandchildren, his children. That should be the end of the matter. Wow. But that's not going to be the end of the matter. Well, O.J. It's a different. It's a. It's a different. It's going to be on the Kardashians. But did he, he shouldn't do that. It would be a terrible mistake. The public doesn't like it. See, he doesn't know that. When, when he, I first, he, he knows that. When I first met him in prison, and this has been made public, so I'm not revealing anything, he said to me, Alan, how can anybody think I committed these murders? I said, O.J., everybody thinks you committed these murders. That's why our job is so difficult, and we need you to listen to us. You, you were the uh, appellate advisor for Simpson's legal defense team during what everybody called the trial of the century. 
I was his God forbid lawyer. He used yeah. to refer to me as God forbid I should be convicted. I need you to help me on the appeal. I was also one of the strategists and I helped prepare the legal issues uh, in the case. It was not a dream team. And obviously he was acquitted in the killing of Nicole Simpson and, and Mr. Goldman. Um, and, and the public doesn't like that, nah. but they shouldn't take it out on him for another crime. Look, he should never have done what he did. How foolish. He should have called the police to get back his memorabilia instead walking in there and confronting these people he knew he should have known he was looking for trouble yeah, yeah. did you ever think when you were originally representing OJ that you'd be talking about him 25 no. years or no you know I had so many cases over the years and you win you lose they go away but OJ is with us forever it's incredible. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, was it the botching up of the prosecution, you think, that, that got him? I mean, obviously, oh, you and the colleagues did an incredible job for him. Let me tell you an example. Yeah. I was there, three feet away from him, when he tried the glove on and oh. went right to the jury and said it's too small. Do you know what the California law... They could have made him try the glove on outside of the hearing of the jury to see whether it fit before they made the decision. And if it didn't... The whole drama of watching him put the glove on. And if on. it fit when he tried it on before and didn't fit in front of the jury, they could have said, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he's faking it. He put it on before and it fit. They botched it so badly. Wow. Well, Putting on Furman as a witness, they knew that we were going to find his raci racist statements. They made so many mistakes. We didn't win that well, case. Al they Alan, lost it. So the, the FX miniseries, People vs. O.J. Simpson, which is based on the Jeffrey Tubin book, uh, that's brought this case. It was such a beautifully done. No, it was, it was. You not don't like well it. Done. It was not. For, let me give I you. I mean, I watch. If you me, watch it now, they, but it, it brings the it story brings, back. Sure, but they but, left out. The well, what most did they talk that? about? What they the left out? The sock. There was a sock, the sock that OJ's blood on it, and the blood of victims. We were able to prove that the sock didn't have. Uh, uh, EDT, uh, had EDTA on it, which is a chemical not found in the human body, but found in test tubes. We were able to prove that the sock had mirror images on all four sides, which could only occur if you poured blood onto it, not if it was being worn. The jurors said this one piece of evidence was manufactured, and if you find a cockroach in your spaghetti, you don't throw out just the cockroach, you throw out the whole bowl of spaghetti. Wow. That's why we won the case. You wouldn't know that. If you watched either of the two TV renditions, they both had a narrative, they had an agenda, and they misled the public. Wow. So when, you were, when they were about to announce the, the verdict in that trial, were, how was the team, the legal team? Were you confident? Were you no, thinking? No. We, we, we were hoping at best, I was hoping at best at that point for a hung jury because I knew we had a racially divided jury. By the way, they picked the racial component, the prosecution. They brought the case to downtown L.A. where they knew they'd get a predominantly black jury instead of putting it in the suburbs, which would have given them a predominantly white jury. Right. Marsha Clark thought nine black women would be sympathetic. We understood that if you want to present a case of the police manipulating evidence, you have a predominantly black jury. They have had that happen right. to their relatives, their friends. They would be more sympathetic, more understanding. Look, race did play a role in the case, but they picked the racial component of the jury, not we. Wow. Let's stipulate but, uh, that so they... Alan, these, me, these movies go into... All, that's why I found those movies fascinating, right. because uh, some of the passion that you're expressing in the story, that's in the, that TV sure. film. Yeah. Sure. If we stipulate that the conviction... Uh, in Nevada was basically karma-based retribution for the... No, he was guilty what, of what he yes, did. Yes, but, but yeah, the, the sentence, excess, the fact that it was yeah, nine right. years, yeah. I mean, 33 what years. What would sentence. be your advice to him now as he goes before the parole board? Should he be obviously saying that he was railroaded would not be the right strategy. Oh, no. I hope they don't ask him about that because that puts him in an impossible and unfair position to ask him to comment on the California case where he was acquitted. So presumably he, were asked, he should be humble? And he should be it. very humble. He should say, look, Americans have the right to make their own judgment. I was found liable. I hope to pay back the, the Goldman family. I take my responsibility for the civil trial seriously, but I was acquitted and the American public should understand that the rule of law uh, requires that the legal system treat me as an acquitted defendant. Yeah, because that's going to be the elephant in the room. And it probably will never be spoken about okay. by any side. But the fact that you can not think about it, don't think about an elephant, is going to be very, very difficult. But, you know, these parole officers have a good, good reputation, and I think, I hope, they'll do the right thing and think about the crime in Nevada, not the alleged crime in California. Yeah, all right, we'll be watching Alan Gray.